Hey guys, how's it going? I am back and today I just wanted to make a follow-up video on that spreadsheet video that I made about my new stock analysis spreadsheet that you can get access to um, because I had a bunch of questions and a few of the questions were very similar so I thought that I would address some of those questions in this video. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go and check out that other video about my spreadsheet because it's a really great resource. It's completely free and you should definitely get your hands on it if you're serious about investing. So in today's video, I just wanted to address two main things that people were asking about. The first was people having trouble editing and actually inputting data into the spreadsheet and how to make copies of it and that sort of thing. So I'm going to address that and then I'm going to talk about where I get the data that I put into this spreadsheet from, what websites, and if it's not available on websites, how can I get it from the original annual reports of each individual company. So I'm gonna go through both of those things in today's video, and if that's something that is relevant to you, make sure you stick around and watch this one. If for some reason you have access to my spreadsheet, but you're not actually subscribed to this channel, I recommend that you subscribe. I provide as much value as possible, and if you want individual in-depth help, it's really great because I have such a small community at the moment, so it means that I can reply to each and every one of your comments and messages and help you guys as much as possible and provide as much value as you guys need in these videos and individually um, off YouTube. So without further ado, let's jump over to my laptop. All right, so the first thing that I saw a couple of people had problem with is actually editing the spreadsheet. So when you get a copy of this spreadsheet through the link in the description, you're gonna open it and this is actually going to be a public spreadsheet. So what that means is you're not going to be able to edit it because if you were able to edit something in here or if when I edit something in here because I've created it, that's gonna be edited for every single person who's accessing this spreadsheet. So for that reason, I've made the original spreadsheet view only so that it is sort of a template that everyone can access and then people can make copies of it and edit those copies on their own Google Drive. So, if there's any confusion, you have to be logged into a Google account, which will be up here. If, it, if you're not logged in, it'll say log in. Just make an account if you don't have one, but if you do, just log in. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over to file, you're gonna click make a copy, and it'll say name, copy of spreadsheet, let's just call it, we'll just call it that. Um, and then you can put that spreadsheet somewhere on your Google Drive. So this is folders that I've already got on my Google Drive. If you're new to it, it should just be blank and you can just paste it in the main area. So I'm just gonna put it there for example and go okay. And it will open it up, it'll open the copy up into a new tab. So now you can see that we're using the copy of stock analysis spreadsheet rather than the original. So the original is just view only. Now you've got a copy that you will be able to edit and you'll be able to put in whatever numbers you need to put in here or, and all that sort of thing. And then also you can see if I just go to my Google Drive and I go to where I put it, it's right here. And you can see that I'll be able to click on that, open it, and again, I'll be able to edit this version of it. So the second thing that people were having trouble with was finding the actual data to put into the spreadsheet. So I thought that I would go through each of the websites that I use to find each of the pieces of data. So first of all, if you're analyzing US stocks, I use different websites than when I'm analyzing Australian stocks, stocks on the ASX. So I'm gonna start off with going through what, where you will find this data for the US stocks, and then I'll go over to the Australian stocks. So for the sales, earnings per share, equity, and free cash flow for the last 10 years of data for US stocks, I like to go over to quickfs.net, and you can just search in the company, let's say we're doing Google, and it'll come up with an overview and it'll give you some of the numbers here, but you can get all of the numbers over here. You just go into income statement. You can see revenue from 2006 to 2017. That's plenty of numbers since we only need eight to 17. Um, at the bottom of the income statement, there is the earnings per share. You always use the diluted earnings per share. Um, I'll explain why in another video, but just uh, as a base, always use earnings per share. And you can see all those numbers are there. For equity, we can come over to the balance sheet and at the bottom of the balance sheet, we can see shareholders equity. Again, all the numbers are there. You just copy those over. And lastly, we need free cash flow. Now, free cash flow isn't actually on the cash flow statement, but it's derived from the cash flow statement. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna see on the cash flow statement, we have cash from operations. So that's this line here. 
And then we've got just below that, we've got property, plant and equipment, and all of these are negative. So it's a cost. Now, what you're going to do to get free cash flow is take the operating cash flow and you're going to subtract the property, plant and equipment expense. So that's going to give you the free cash flow. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go through and take this number, subtract that, enter it in, take this number, subtract that one, enter it in and do that for all of them so that you can calculate the free cash flow number from 2008 all the way up to 2017. Now, if you're analyzing an Australian stock, I actually haven't found any websites where you can get all 10 years of numbers for Australian stocks. I only find websites that give you the first five years or the last five years. So I go to a place like the Wall Street Journal or even um, Yahoo Finance or MSN Money and you can just search a stock. I've got Commonwealth loaded up. You can go all sections over here, income statement. So again, you're going to have revenues and earnings per share on the income statement and then you're going to have uh, equity on the balance sheet and free cash flow is derived from the cash flow statement. So as you can see, maybe using a bank wasn't the best example, but interest income is a bank's revenue. And you can see we've got numbers from 2017 to 2013. So we've got the first five numbers. So what I'll do is I'll, if I'm doing an analysis of an Australian stock, I will take these five numbers for revenue. I will take the five numbers for the EPS diluted, and I'll do the same for go over to the balance sheet and get the equity. And equity is just down the bottom, get the first five, and then I'll go over to the cash flow statement and I'll calculate the free cash flow. One extra point, if you're getting the first five numbers of free cash flow, I would go straight over to the Wall Street Journal because if you click financing activities and scroll down, you can see that they actually calculate the free cash flow for you. So for the first five numbers of either US or Australian stocks, you can just come into the Wall Street Journal and find the free cash flow. And then for the other five numbers, you're going to need to calculate it yourself. But as you can see, if you did want to calculate it by yourself, you can see net operating cash flow is right here. And then just in the a little bit below it, we've got capital expenditure, which is what you want to subtract. So capital expenditure is the same as property, plant and equipment. Um, sometimes capital expenditure includes a couple other things, but they're basically the same thing. So that's what you want to do. You want to take the net operating cash flow and you want to subtract either capital expenditure or property plant and equipment expenses but they should normally be the same thing okay so then to get the last five years of numbers that we need for the earnings per share the revenue uh, the equity and the free cash flow what you're going to do is you're going to search a company and you're going to type investor relation well, it's not spell investor investor relations and Every website that is on the ASX or the US stock markets will have an investor relations page and it's basically where they keep all of the information that's related um, to shareholders. So as you can see, Ramsey Health's website, you can see we've got the annual and financial reports. So we're going to go into there and you can see they've got a number of all of the years that they've got financial reports for. So if you remember, the Wall Street Journal gave us 2017, 16, 15, 14 and 13. So we're going to start off at 2012 because we're going to need to get 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8. So we're going to start off with 12, come over to 12, click the annual report. And the annual report will open and you should just be able to scroll down and find the contents. Financial reports is on page 37. So we'll just go down a bit. Yep, so if we scroll down, you can see that we've come to the income statement and we can get the revenue from 2012. And also the annual reports will usually include the current year that they're showing results for as well as one or two or three of the past years as comparison. So we can grab from, so from the 2012 annual report, we can grab the 2012 number and the 2011 number. So there's those two and also diluted earnings per share. Oh, well, here's the cash flow statement. So as you can see, we've got operating um, cash flow and then we've got the purchase of property, plant and equipment, which is there, which is what you're going to subtract to get the free cash flow. And here is the balance sheet. And you can see at the bottom, we've got 
total equity. And again, we've got it for the 2012 year and the 2011 year. So for Australian stocks, you're going to go through and you're going to go into each of those annual reports and get the last five numbers. Now, I know this is tedious, but it's better than paying out a significant fee um, to some sort of website in order to get these numbers quickly for free, especially if you're starting out. That's a big expense that um, you could be putting that money into the stock market and making a return on it rather than it being a negative cash flow for you. So also on here, we have the current assets, current liabilities and total liabilities just for the latest year. And again, you can just go on Wall Street Journal or Yahoo Finance and you'll easily be able to find these numbers, all of which are on the balance sheet. So next, we're going to need the earnings per share and we're going to need the high earnings per share for the last five years, the low and the average. And we want this number for as long as possible. So if you find a PE average that is over 10 years, that's probably better. But from what I've seen, it's most of the time these websites offer five years um, for free. And then if you want more years, you have to pay a premium. So you're just going to go over to Google and you're going to type in the company's name, which I'm going to do Google's and then average PE and just search that. And the first result is usually a Y charts website. That's the one you're going to want to go to. And you can see on the right here, we've got the average PE for the last five years for Google. We've got the maximum and the minimum. And those are the three numbers that you're going to enter into these three cells here. Next, we've got the one year and the five year ROIC or return on investor capital. Again, just come over to Google and search the company's name and then MSN money. And the first one should be the result. You can see here stock quote for Google. We'll click on that. You can click the an analysis tab. So once you've clicked analysis, you're going to scroll down and see management effectiveness. Just click that. And as you can see here, return on capital for the one year and then the return on capital for the five year average in brackets. So that's all the tricky numbers you need to get. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. If you've got this whole page filled out and you go over to the growth tab, this should all be filled out for you by um, formulas. For the value matrix, you simply need the trailing 12 months EPS, which you can find on any finance website, such as Yahoo Finance or the Wall Street Journal. Time frame is how many years you're looking out. I recommend you use 10 years and price is the current stock price. And lastly, on the buy zone calculator page, again, we've got the EPS, the time frame, the stock price. If you don't know what you're doing with the margin of safety and the required rate of return, I recommend leaving them at 50 and 15%. And of course, if you want to do a manual, uh, if you manually want to enter in the growth estimate over the next 10 years for a company, you can do that over here. Otherwise, you can just use the automatic buy zone calculator. So that covers everything I wanted to talk about today. If you are still having trouble, just send me a message and I'm happy to help you out. But hopefully this answers a lot of questions for people who were struggling to access the spreadsheet because you're new with Google Drive. I know it can be confusing. So um, I know I certainly had a lot of trouble using it um, when I was starting out. So I hope I cleared up that confusion and also where you can find these financial data points and how you can fill the spreadsheet out as quickly as possible. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.